American Outdoor Trails Radio Magazine with Jim and Trav. Ammo and Attitudes producer Ron McWilliams, professional bass angler Mike Iconelli, Midwest Outdoors Bob Jensen, and Gulf Coast editor Larry Bosco will be our special guests. And we'll be headed on the trail with a guy that wanted to know if after the divorce, would they still be cousins? We're talking about those guys from Vanderbilt, your work boot center. Saturday mornings at 7 o'clock Pacific time on CRN Digital Talk CRN 2. I'm Jim Ferguson. I'll see you on the trail. CRN Digital Talk Radio, the original talk back with yours truly, Chuck Wilder, Paul Stern up there near the Hollywood Hills taking the toll-free calls at 1-800-336-2225. We're live across America on this radio station or this cable system and, of course, around the world always at www.crntalk.com. Program note, uh, Monday, David North, Center for Immigration Studies. Wait until you hear this article. <laughs> it is an unlikely third path paying unwanted migrants to go home. Interesting article. Barbara Comstock, she's spokesperson for the Workness Fairness Institute, uh, Big Labor Allies in Congress. They're trying to tuck this little-known bill in that will increase the membership roster and dues, but make communities less safe. And uh, Jim Corey returns, Vice President of National Association Chiefs of Police, and uh, we're going to be talking about his latest stories. And one of them, the new immigration chief opposes Immigration enforcement. Boy, perfect election there, huh? Yes. Right now, I want to go to Joseph Farah. He's the founder, editor, and CEO of WorldNet Daily, the world's leading independent Internet news source. Uh, he joined Sarah Palin, by the way, of one of two nationally televised keynote speakers at the first National Tea Party convention. That was uh, February in Nashville. By the way, he's scheduled to make a repeat performance at the second National Tea Party convention. And that is going to be in July. We'll give you the exact date in a moment. His 2003 bestseller, Taking America Back, prophesies the movement today known as the Tea Party. The former Daily Newspaper editor has authored, co-authored, or collaborated on more than a dozen books, including, by the way, Rush Limbaugh's book, See, I Told You So, and See, I Told You So, that Joseph would be here, and he's here. Hey, Joseph, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Chuck? Just fine. Now, you, I tell you... As I was telling somebody else, I said, I keep hearing about all these Tea Party books coming out. And sure enough, there is a slew of Tea Party books coming out. And uh, But there's only one that's called the Tea Party Manifesto, correct? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> An audacious <laughs> title. <laughs> from, from the author who's probably a billionaire by now, you got a, you got everything going for you there, Joseph. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I give it all away, Chuck. I give it well, all away. <laughs> that is true, yeah. Now, uh, this book is going to be released uh, July 4th, correct? That's right. Uh-huh. And, uh, and uh, uh, go ahead. Well, you I'm know, just going to say that, you know, you're the guy that predicted the Tea Party before there ever was a Tea Party, and you can explain <laughs> that. Well, yeah, in 2003, in that book, Taking America Back, I, I, I first uh, kind of uh, dropped the, the, uh, the, the bomb that there was, you know, we were on the verge, then I thought, of a uh, of spontaneous grassroots movement of this kind. Uh, I, and I didn't predict when it was going to come, but in 2008, I got more specific in a book I wrote called None of the Above. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I, you know, really predicted with great specificity that if Barack Obama were elected president, that would be the trigger for this movement. Uh, I, I did everything but call it the Tea Party. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we really described it to a T. And the reason for that was, um, you know, here's my theory on where we, where we are today, Chuck. We, we've been on this path for a long time. It's not, it's not that Barack Obama came along and changed the direction that the political establishment was moving. All he did was step on the gas pedal. He floored it. We've been drifting in the same direction for a long, long time, on and off for 50 years, let's face it. And, um, and I knew that Obama was going to do this if he was elected because he said so. He told us what he was going to do, and I knew that, that would have a, that there'd be a shock effect on the American think, Joseph, public. that uh, besides just the way he was moving, that any of his arrogance might have helped create <laughs> the Tea Party? Well, arrogance and, and, and let's face it, passion and commitment he's you know he's committed to this agenda he believes in it 
far more than, for instance, you know, Bill Clinton did. Bill Clinton believed in himself. But, uh, but, but, but Obama's a true believer. He, he truly is a socialist. He told us throughout the campaign, people, did, people didn't want to believe it. You know, they were so ready for change, so sick of, uh, of the Bush administration, I guess, that they, they opt for the, uh, the new kid on the block. So here we are. We've got the Tea Party movement. And uh, it's bigger and, and more potent than I even imagined. And, uh, I, I, you know, I've been noticing that a lot of people, both on the left and the right, were giving advice to the Tea Party movement. And the essence of this advice from both sides of the political spectrum was that the Tea Party movement should stick to economic issues only. Don't, and begin don't to think support about anyone. It. What's that? Like, don't get in there and say, here's who we're supporting. Well, no, no, they don't, you know, I don't think anybody went so far as to say, you know, you shouldn't uh, endorse candidates. But, okay. but what, you know, when they ask, what is the Tea Party movement all about? These folks, these experts on both the left and the right, they want, they want the Tea Party to say, we're just about economic issues, meaning taxes and debt and deficit, cutting spending, those kinds of issues. And, you know, I, I thought about this, and I said, this sounds familiar to me. Where have I heard this before? And it, it occurred to me that this is the same advice people had been giving to the Republican Party for so many years from both the inside and the outside. You know, this whole big tent mentality that if we could just all rally around economic issues, the party would be that much bigger. Well, um, I started thinking to myself, you know, every time the Republican Party did that, it was it was the it was caused the downfall of the Republican Party because uh, and 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 so you know I decided to give the Tea Party a, a little prescription, which um, and and part of it involves changing the terminology because there was something about economic issues that bothered me. Mm -hmm. I take a backseat to no one with regard to cutting spending, cutting taxes, all those good things. I, I'm as you know, libertarian on economic issues as you can get. But in order for that to be the focus of a potent political movement, you sort of have to say to yourself that the fundamental problems we face in America are economic and material. And uh, I don't believe that. I believe they go much deeper in a, in a, in a movement that is committed only to economic change and focus on material issues is going to you know, miss the mark, and it's going to be stillborn at some point. And so I think it's a recipe for disaster. And the essence of this book is warning the Tea Party movement not to listen to these experts. Mm -hmm. If they were so smart, they'd have created the movement. They would have been responsible for changing the direction of the country. And in the book, Joseph, uh, you're actually saying... <laughs> As I understand, there is a danger that the Tea Party movement might be compromised. Explain that. Or is that that they're going to just stick on certain subjects they shouldn't? Well, no, there's no question about it. There, there, are, there are factions within the Tea Party movement. Uh, and I will say with you know, even more specificity that these are factions that are led by failed politicians, <laughs> they're not the citizen activists that we think of when we think of the Tea Party movement. Uh, they're people who have had their chance to turn America around and failed. And these are the p people who are the, the impetus behind this idea, economic, economic, economic. Re you know, re when, whenever you hear this, you know, economic issues, what I want you to think is what they're really saying is materialism. Materialism. And, you know, it, it occurs to me that it shouldn't be surprising when people on the left talk about materialism because they are materialists. I mean, this is right out of the playbook of Marx and Engels. Everything is material. There is nothing else but material. And, but why people on the right would brace a materialistic agenda, that seemed uh, strange to me. And it seems to me that what, what, what's happening for, for conservatives and Republicans and uh, others on the right who embrace this materialistic agenda, they're falling for the left's uh, playbook. You know, nobody can outdo the left on, on 